Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching this Ag Forecast for South America, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. Okay, what we're going to start off first here is a look at the last week's worth of total accumulated precipitation. This is measured by satellite. And I'd like to keep your focus down here on parts of Argentina and southern Brazil. As we get this playing forward, you're going to see multiple times, let's get it going here, there we go, where we had thunderstorms that kind of rolled through some of the most productive ground in Argentina. They got a break as you get back here to the 19th and 20th, but then look over the weekend, more storms came through and they did slide farther to the north hitting parts of Paraguay and southern Brazil. By the way, just another place around the world to keep an eye on, uh, especially for those of you that are thinking about wheat. Look at all of the very heavy rainfall that moved through this part of New South Wales, parts of Queensland and northern parts of, of South Australia here. Very heavy rainfall, which we've been forecasting for this area for a while. Now let's come back over here to South America. I'd like to go into some individual weather stations and just show you what's going on here uh, in parts uh, of Argentina. We're going to start over in Buenos Aires, this province here. Now I've, I've clicked first on a station that's right here in Buenos Aires. And what you notice is that this is an area that only saw scattered shower. So you notice that right around the city, we're still quite dry in that area. But as you move back over here into, you know, toward the west where we have a lot of farm ground, I'll just pick this station right in through here. And as things adjust, you do see that throughout the last couple of days, especially recently, a couple of 30 millimeter rainfall events here. That's an inch of rainfall coming into this area. Now from Buenos Aires, why don't we just go a little bit farther to the west? This is Cordoba in that region. Let's just pick the station right here. And once again, we kind of zoom in on that area, and this is the heavy rainfall that just came in. So after being quite dry for a while, temperatures also quite high during this time, that rainfall has really come in here over the last several days, bringing up those precipitation amounts. Uh, we can go a little bit farther uh, back to the east. Let's go check out over here near Santa Fe. Let's just choose this station right in through this area. And as the graphics adjust, again, we see some recent precipitation in that area. And even back farther to the north, let's just grab another station here. We're just kind of getting an idea in this area on how much precipitation's come in lately. And again, we just see that heavier rainfall from this past week helping out with some of the warmer and drier conditions that we had been seeing. And you can see the spikes in the heat that were before this. This is just a temperature graph where these spikes upwards show you really where we were having some, some trouble there with heat and dry conditions. Now, as we go forward, take a look at the forecast here from the European model. I'm going to use the maps over here at weathermodels.com for this one until I finish building my South American maps. But as you're going to notice here, as we work throughout Monday, now getting into Tuesday, and then watch this. Let's go Wednesday into Thursday. Toward the end of this week, I'm going to be watching three separate high-pressure cells. One is here. One is pretty far to the south in Argentina, and the other one is off uh, the east coast. Now, the moisture is coming around through the Amazon and is getting hung up right here, getting pushed farther to the south. And watch what happens as we get out here toward, well, this is Wednesday night, into the day on Thursday, now working our way through the day on Friday and even into the early weekend. If I just kind of rock back and forth, keep your eye on Argentina, the potential exists for some pretty strong storms kind of trapped between these three high pressure cells and the moisture pushing down from the north here. So with that, we're expecting some quite heavy rainfall in this region. Let's take a look at some of the numbers here as we get out here looking a little bit longer term for the whole week. You notice that up in Brazil's primary central and western, excuse me, central and eastern growing areas, we're now over to a drier pattern. So this is an area that we just put down uh, the safrina corn crop and cotton crop, uh, and it's going over into a warmer and drier time period. Uh, you can see here, let me just show you, there we go, those are the temperatures, sometimes averaging here upwards of two to five, maybe up to seven degrees Celsius above normal, while Argentina is cooler over the next week. Again, if we just take a look at that precip map for the next week, we're very wet in Argentina. Some places on those thunderstorms grabbing an extra two to three inches, maybe even more of rainfall. As we get out there into week two, now this is interesting. Remember in last Thursday's video, we talked about the slowing down of the monsoon. At this point, we start to see that there is a broader, drier pattern for much of central Brazil all the way to Argentina. I think this has a lot to do with what the Antarctic Oscillation is doing, or sometimes called the Southern Annular Mode. Uh, I also think this has something to do with uh, the, the fading of the La Nina. But in general, the models were quite consistent with a drier pattern into week two here, although the European is drier than the GFS. But if we put this all together, 
uh, out into week two. Let's now look at those temperature patterns. So we are cooler in this region, despite some of the, the drier conditions. We're warm up here in Brazil's primary safrina corn and cotton area. But we put this all together. What we end up with is, here it is, this map. That's our next 15 days of, of total accumulated precip compared to normal. And uh, what we're being very careful to monitor here is if the safrina crop uh, does recover some of the moisture it's going to be losing here uh, as we finish March and get into April. Some of the longer range models attempt to keep that area dry, but there are some indications that the monsoonal strength could resurge back into that second week of April, bringing in some more moisture to, you know, to this area specifically. So uh, we'll keep a close eye on this, keep you posted, but I appreciate giving me a little extra time today to talk about what's going on in South America, and I look forward to giving you another update on Thursday. Thanks.